Welcome to Living Outside the Matrix. My name's Nigel Howitt, and on the show today, we're going to examine why mainstream morality blocks us from thriving. It prevents us from flourishing. Mainstream morality is a belief system set up and counter to the best interests of individuals who wish to thrive. So last week we looked at philosophy and how important it is. We looked at the five basic branches of philosophy. Um, we looked at the fact that everybody has a philosophy. You can't, you, you know, only choice is is whether or not you're conscious of it and whether or not you, you chose it yourself. A philosophy being uh, a general understanding of the nature of reality and how we fit into it. Okay, there are the five basic um, uh core subjects, metaphysics being the what is there, where am I, um, the uh, epistemology, the second branch is how do I know, um, the third aspect of, uh, of, of philosophy combines these two into what should I do as a consequence of knowing the nature of reality and how I know things, what should I then do, the fourth branch is politics which is what should men do in a social context and ethics is the fifth branch which it concerns the needs of consciousness and the sort of refueling if you like of man's consciousness with art and beauty the things that we need that are our needs of, of our consciousness rather than physical needs ethics this third branch is where we're going to focus today um, ethics and morality are two um, pretty much interchangeable terms really morality why do we need it and, and what's it for? Okay, Everybody lives by a, a code of morality. You, 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 can't, you can't fail to do that, rather like having a philosophy. Everybody um, needs to know how to live, what to do. And within the matrix, within this metaphor that I use to describe uh, the, the mainstream cultural download that everyone plugs into or that most people plug into, Within the matrix, most people simply look side to side, watch what everybody else is doing or, or hear what they say, and they go along with that. And that's simply following the herd. And uh, it's, it's not a good idea, as uh, this whole podcast is all about illustrating that we need to break out of the matrix. Again, I must emphasize here that the matrix is just a metaphor. I'm not in any way subscribing to a computer generated reality or anything like that. Reality is an objective absolute. And, um, and I, you know, I simply use the idea of a matrix, the matrix as a metaphor. It's a very useful one for an enslaved race of, of unaware people having um, their, their resources harvested from them. So back to the theme. The theme here then is to demonstrate that this Branch of philosophy, morality, ethics, in our dominant culture in uh, Western civilization, where I'm in, in the UK anyway, and indeed the United States, the dominant morality, why does that prevent us from thriving, from flourishing? So the first question we're going to address is, is what is a morality and why do we need it? Well, a morality is a code of values that determine our actions and choices, which consequently determine how we live our lives. Ayn Rand came up with a very useful de definition of values, and she said, um, a value is that which we act to gain or keep. Okay, so we act to gain or keep money, we act to gain and keep our house, if we have a mortgage, we go to work, we act to gain and keep our nourishment, we feed ourselves, we act to gain and keep a nice car or a, a yacht or whatever it is um, that, 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 we've, that we value. So whatever we act to gain and keep is what we value. So that's what values are. So morality is a code of values. And we've looked at what values are. Virtues are the things that we do to, to keep our values, to act to gain and keep them. So our primary virtue being reason. We need a code of morality because human beings have no innate knowledge. We don't automatically know what to do. Animals seem to know what foods to eat. They automatically avoid the things that poison them, excuse me. And they automatically seem to know the foods that will nourish them. Plants automatically absorb the uh, nutrients and chemicals and compounds they need from the, from the soil. Humans, on the other hand, have the power of choice. 
And uh, this is why we need uh, a code of morality, because we can make mistakes. We're not omniscient. We have no innate knowledge. And life is a challenge. We have to suss out what to do, how to act in order to live a successful life proper to man. How do we prosper and flourish and achieve our happiness? This is something that we have to figure out. So again, let's remind ourselves, what is the main goal? The main goal in life is to flourish, to achieve happiness, prosperity, to enjoy meaning and satisfaction in our lives. And you could you could say this, you could call use the word flourish, to thrive or to flourish. I tend to use the word thrive. But to be in that successful state of living. So that's the goal we're trying to do. That's the goal of this podcast. And that's really the goal of everybody's life. How do we flourish? What do we need to do to flourish? Well, we need to use our basic human faculty of thinking, our ability to conceptualise. Um, this is our distinctly human uh, form of consciousness. And it's what we need to exercise. It's our basic means of survival. Our use of the faculty of reason in the process of thinking using the method of logic. This is how human beings gain knowledge about reality and therefore know what to do in it. So we have to use our minds, we have to work out what to do, testing things against reality, and then we need to be free to act on our choices. So we need to be free and unencumbered, which speaks to the political need for freedom, in order to create our values, in order to uh, pursue our goals and achieve the things that we need to do to live a happy life. The other thing we need to do is that we need to be self-centred. We need to focus on upon our own needs. We need to, uh, for example, if we're starting a business, we need to give that all of our attention and we need to give it an awful lot of our time, at least in the early stages. If we're working on personal development, if we're trying to become the best version of ourselves that we possibly can, we need to be focused on ourselves uh, rationally and on our self-interest if we are to flourish and thrive. If we wish to achieve happiness, we have to focus on um, choosing our uh, goals and achieving them in order to enjoy the consequence that is that is happiness. So all of this requires rational self-interest and it's uh, essentially summed up in the term egoism which is the, the, the word that, that basically means a code of ethics that rationally looks at the needs of self. One of the things that you'll immediately notice is that this is counter to the generally perceived notion of what is good out there in the matrix. So in summary, how do we flourish? We need to think, we need to act, and we need to be free to act upon our own choices. Um, we need to be self-centered, and we need to be free. We need political freedom. So now let's turn our attention to the, the dominant uh, morality the, um, within the matrix, within the mainstream, within this cultural download. So if we, if we do absolutely nothing, but if we just talk to people on the street and our friends and our family, we will quickly ascertain that the main the, the main standard of what is good, what we should do, is to sacrifice. It is to give. It's very easy to confuse with helping others, but it stems from the religious morality that we've inherited um, over the centuries, over the last uh, couple of millennia at least, um, which is all about sacrifice to the deity. Or these days it's sacrifice to the group, to the state, with collectivism. So the dominant morality is based on what's termed altruism. Altruism is a term that was coined by uh, a collectivist called uh, August Comte, um, I think in the 17th century, um, which literally translated means otherism. As opposed to focusing on self, we give to other. We're always um, sacrificing, giving up our values to other. So at this point, we should just define sacrifice. 
because I've noticed that a lot of people um, don't seem to have an accurate uh, definition of sacrifice. To sacrifice is to give up a value in favour of a lesser value. It's a net loss. If you sacrifice, you're not gaining anything. You're giving up values. Okay, the the idea of tithing ten percent of your income to the church, for example, um, you're giving up. I mean, allegedly you're 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 earning kudos with God and storing up treasures in heaven, but in reality, on earth, you're giving up values. You're giving away your money. So, the religions, all of the three monotheistic religions, are. Uh, basically share rather this this common morality of altruism. Jesus, the central figure in the Christian religion, um, died on the cross and we and we think of that cross as the, the symbol of Christianity. He died for us. His ultimate uh, ultimate good was that he gave his life, he sacrificed his life. And in the Old Testament um, pertaining to, to Islam and Judaism, there's Abraham and Abraham being willing to sacrifice his son. God asks him to sacrifice his son, and he's ready to do it. He's there with a the knife, but God says, no, no need. But he was ready to sacrifice his only son. So sacrifice is the order of the day, and that permeates our whole culture. The whole of, of our civilization is heftily rooted in this concept that the, the standard of good is sacrifice. Is, is giving up values. Now, this runs counter to the idea of thriving. To thrive and to flourish, we have to accumulate values. If, if I want a fantastic life, if I want a big house and a beautiful car, um, I'd like several children, that all costs money, you know, I'd, 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 I, I want comforts, I want computers, stereos, I want things that make my life enjoyable all of the things that we need. This takes resources. These are values we need to collect. We need to gain values. And also it should be noted that as we gain value, as we become wealthy, we can become more useful to each other as well, to the extent that we produce values. So the idea is that we want to thrive and that the general moral context is set against that because it's all about giving up. It's all about sacrifice. And if we look back to the birth of the United States, where the, the idea of thriving and flourishing and freedom were actually manifest, if you like, in the creation of a country, the first country ever born in freedom, where men had a right to live for their own sake, was, was very much rooted in uh, a, a, a morality of, of um, well, it was rooted in a, in a politics of capitalism and recognising the need for freedom. But the, the flaw in, in, the, uh, in the whole plan, if you like, with the founding fathers was that under, underpinning their morality, they still um, were men of religion and they still, they still believed that that morality came from God and that you couldn't derive a code of, of, uh, of ethics, a code of values from the facts of reality. And this was, was, the, was why the uh, uh, United States did so well in the beginning with capitalism dominating, but it never really got a strong foothold and socialism has crept in ever since. And with Marxism at the beginning of last uh, century, and the whole rise of the Soviet Union, and and here in England and America now, the 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 popularity of socialism, this has all come from the moral root or the ethical root that the best thing we can do is to sacrifice. And these days, of course, we we sacrifice to the state, and the state um, redistributes um, the wealth and resources. So we can see that the modern morality, the mainstream morality in the matrix, this, this altruism, this uh, code of, of self-sacrifice, very much supports and lends itself to, to socialism. And when we uh, try to advocate freedom and capitalism, which is the, uh, simply the respect for property rights, 
and the granting men freedom to act on their own choices. This is met with ferocious opposition from most people, even if they're not intellectually in touch with why they oppose to it, to the extent that we subscribe to this moral um, impetus towards sacrifice, we, we are necessarily going to question capitalism. And this is because ethics, as a, uh, that the branch of philosophy, underpins politics. Ethics determines how individuals should act. And once we've worked out how individuals should act, then we can work out how individuals should act in the context of society with respect to each other, and that is the politics. So we really need a new morality, and Ayn Rand, with her ideas last century, taking on the ideas from Aristotle, from John Locke, from many other great thinkers before her, she really did some incredible work at turning this concept of, of morality on its head by asking fundamental questions, again, by thinking. She was a brilliant thinker. Instead of asking the question, um, what code of values should we follow? What morality is best for man? Altruism, that's the one that immediately sprang to mind because religion had been advocating that for centuries. She started to ask more fundamentally, what are values and why do we need them? Why do we need a code of these things called values? So she defines values, as we mentioned earlier, and she rationally demonstrates that you can achieve values through observing the facts of reality. And this is something that we'll look into in a little bit more depth in, in another episode. But she turns the whole concept of morality on its head and demonstrates rationally that if we are self-interested, if we seek to make our own lives as good as they can, if we act upon our own judgment in the absence of force and coercion, then we are best placed to thrive and flourish. Capitalism is all about the freedom to produce and to exchange goods with uh, the concept of property rights being fully respected. And this has been demonstrated by history to, to be the main way uh, to achieve the creation of wealth, a key component, of course, in flourishing. So the, the main three pillars of conventional philosophy, just to summarise, Within the matrix, the dominant rising philosophy, again since the time of the birth of the United States, has been the Kantian model that you can't, reason is not, um, reason can't be trusted to know reality. We can't know reality. This has given birth to the primacy of, primacy of consciousness and subjectivism. Subjectivism permeates our whole culture. The idea that we can create our own reality with the sort of New Age mystics being the ultimate um, sort of expression of that. People who believe we literally create our own reality as opposed to our own experience of reality, which is different. And uh, I've talked about that in a previous episode. So subjectivism is the main metaphysics of the, of the, of the matrix. And its ethics is mysticism, because if reality is anything that everyone can, can, can choose it to be, if you can affect it with your will and your beliefs, which is what we create our own reality and subjectivism is all about, then necessarily you can't know reality because everybody has a different reality. There's no such thing as truth. And might becomes right. The, the, the use of force is the only way to really assert one person's reality or, or truth over another, because there's no, there's no way of demonstrating in reason objective facts. So mysticism and force go together as, as uh, you know, two halves of the same team, really. So we've got the dominant metaphysics of subjectivism leading to the dominant, um, or not leading to, but also the dominant um, epistemology of mysticism coming largely from religion and mysticism let's remind ourselves is relies on faith it's the idea of uh, another reality we can't access it's the idea of a supernatural deity and it 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 advocates ideas that cannot be proven this is why 
faith is required um, for all of the religions and for any way of thinking that that subscribes to to channeling or any sort of means of obtaining knowledge, so-called knowledge, through a sixth sense. The only means that we, we humans can get knowledge is using the senses, observing reality and, and reasoning. And if there's no evidence for something, you know, if there's no evidence for unicorns or the Easter bunny, then we have to rationally conclude that they don't exist. So mysticism and the use of faith is the predominant underlying epistemology of the matrix. And then built on top of that, we have altruism. We have this idea that you must sacrifice. And it used to be sacrifice to, to the tribe, um, sacrifice to the king, sacrifice to the emperor, uh, to God. These days, in a, it's become secularized with the idea of sacrificing to society, giving up to government. And there, it has to be said that there are there are another uh, there, there are other belief systems such as egalitarian, egalitarianism, um, which argues that we should all be equal, and it advocates giving up or taking from those that have more and making everybody equal. These are other forms of of uh, thinking that are underpinned by the concept of the good being to sacrifice. So Ayn Rand turned these upside down completely. In terms of the metaphysics, she says, no, reality is an objective absolute. Real things are what they are. A is A. We can't change it with our wishes. This gives us a firm platform of reality, an objective reality, objective facts to refer to when we deal with each other as men. In epistemology, she argues that... Um, that reason is is uh, our only means to acquiring knowledge, and reason, and of course the the fact that A is A in, in metaphysics translates across into epistemology as there are no contradictions. Okay, the a chair is a chair, and it can't be a chair and a table at the same time. These sorts of things. So in epistemology, it is reason as the only means to gaining knowledge. She then. Uh, assembles these from these basic platforms. She then questions the whole, the whole idea of uh, the, a historical idea that values and a code of morality could not be derived from the facts of reality. This this has been held um, over the centuries by the main religions, and indeed is still advocated by many today. The idea that you can't can't derive values. From, from the facts of reality. And the code of values has to come down um, from God, basically, from religions, and which ties into mysticism. Ayn Rand smashed that with, with uh, her ethics of rational self-interest, with, with egoism. So these are the three aspects of the mainstream thinking in what I refer to as the matrix, which have, have been turned upside down with the thinking of Ayn Rand, and they necessarily must be turned upside down for anybody seeking to um, extricate themselves from the mainstream madness. Anybody th uh, seeking to, to thrive, anybody seeking to really truly flourish, to, to think independently, to achieve intellectual sovereignty, all of these things lie outside of the matrix. Freedom lies outside of the matrix. Wealth creation and capitalism outside of the matrix. M mainstream modern thinking is set against these things. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps. We don't need to become experts in philosophy. We don't need to become experts in morality. But it really does serve us if we take the trouble to look into these subjects to gain a basic understanding of them. Because as I mentioned last week, in knowing a little bit about philosophy, if we know a little bit about morality, if we know what it's for to, to help us know how to live, and if you know why we need it, because you have no innate knowledge, if we, if we look into these subjects, it can really help us identify other systems of ideas. And the more we start to think for ourselves, gain confidence in our own um, thinking, we can evaluate and judge with confidence 
that we are choosing right from over and above necessarily what everyone else thinks. Because no matter how many people think something is right, doesn't make it right. The truth is the truth no matter how many people believe in it. It's important to see the bigger picture and spot these ideas, these philosophical ideas, this code of ethics, of morality, which dominates the matrix. The idea that, that the standard of good is to give up our values, whereas Ayn Rand shows us that the standard of good is that which supports a human life. We have to act in order to stay alive, and the right actions are the ones that further our life and our interests and our goals and our happiness. And the wrong actions are those that undermine our, our best interests and our life. So the standard of value that Ayn Rand left us with was human life itself, which is almost totally opposite to altruism. The other interesting thing about altruism is that while it focuses on who should be the beneficiary of human actions, we should give up values to other, and that other has changed historically, from, as I said, king, emperor, god, society, the group. Altruism doesn't actually say what we should do. It leaves men in a moral vacuum. It more or less says that anything goes as long as the beneficiary is either God or the state or the group or society. And this is very, very dangerous. Whereas the rational code of, of ethics, rational egoism, where uh, the maintenance of human life is the rational standard, this gives us uh, an easy way of measuring the good from the bad. So the good is, is pro-life and the evil is that which undermines human life. I hope that you've uh, got some value from this podcast and I would urge you to visit the website lawfulrebel.com for a whole lot more on this topic where we look into all of the um, rational values we need to thrive such as good health, what to eat, the importance of thinking, all of these things, being aware of propaganda. So do check out the website for a whole load more information on how you can thrive and please uh, hit the like button and subscribe and uh, feel free to leave comments. I'm very, very uh, happy to address all questions and comments. So thank you very much for listening. And I do hope you'll join me again for another episode of Living Outside the Matrix.